Yeah, so great to see you, my friend. How are you? I'm doing all right, and you? It's good to be here as well. Great. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us and uh, talk a little bit about guitar, hang out. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Oh, me too, man. That's my that's my pleasure. Um, it's a privilege to be here with you and uh, with just such a good idea to be hosted, talk about guitars, whatnot, you know, just is what we love to do, right? Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, just before we start, uh, I want to tell them a little bit about uh, the conversation we had earlier here. Uh, we uh there is this you know there's a lot of things going on in the world right now uh uh some things are not you know not going very great um and i actually even myself i thought about not doing this for a while and wait a little bit uh but uh because of the current situation that was actually another reason why I really thought that this maybe this kind of, of talk, this kind of uh, connection with other people who love guitar and love music would be important. Uh, because during this time, uh, we need to find ways to connect, find ways to, to be in touch with people um, and, uh, and also be in touch with, with uh, friends. You know? And for me, it's great to do this show because I'm very lucky to have amazing friends and people who who make a big impact in their field of expertise and uh joan is is one of those and uh so it's just a perfect thing because uh J joan and i would be doing this talk anyway you know because we just uh i i really i really ad admire his work and uh so i i just thought you know it's a great opportunity just to talk a little bit and share with uh with our audience here uh joan tell us where you are right now uh, right now I'm in my show home, which is where I have some guitars and uh, it's a non-dusty, noisy environment for people to try my instruments and so I can receive them and talk to them. And uh, I didn't have one for a lot of time, for long, long years I stayed only with the shop, so I have to sweep all the shop and receive my guests, shut down all the machinery and just try the guitars there. And this is a recent uh, uh, thing for me. It's not, uh, it, it's only two years old now. So it's a privilege to have a, a, a spare space to receive people and try instruments and talk to them and getting to know them better, their needs and, 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 and so on. That's great. You have a wonderful oh. background behind you. I see some beautiful instruments right there. Uh, Thank you. We are definitely <laughs> going to talk about those pretty soon. Cool, cool. Uh, I, I do have, and uh, it's a, uh, it's hard to keep them on the wall, <laughs> but but it's a nice space. I'm, I'm I'm very happy about it, and I I think people are happy as well when they get here. Not not only for the guitars, but to to share stories. You know, mm. this is not a this is this would not happen without people. You know. This is the main need for this to go smooth and well is to have people here. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is no guitars without guys to play them, guys or girls, mm -hmm. you know. So this is really cool. Yeah, I did spend uh, a lot of time with you in that <laughs> room, you know. Yeah. Before, before <laughs> you made my guitar, lots of yeah. conversations. And after the day that I went there to pick it up, I probably spent... I feel every time I go to their room, I stay there at least four hours. That's, that's uh, a must do, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, this is my shop. This is upstairs. I have a basement shop. It's, it's, it's a very common format for guitar makers. But uh, I, I, I'm, today I'm able to have separate rooms, one for the guitar making itself and the other, which is here for the guitar, trying and improving the aspect of sound and playability and, and etc. Mm -hmm. Great. Very, very good. Uh, well, let's start by, you know, just some very kind of a basic question here. Uh, tell us about you, how you got started on uh, guitar making. What's your real... Uh, Tell us about this relationship with the instrument. How long ago did you start and how this process developed? 
Okay. I started uh, a bit more than 16 years ago. I started as a guitar player, so I relate to you and other guitar players in this world. And uh, just before I talk about a, a little bit of a, my background, I, I'm, I'm with you, Paulo, as far as what concerns the world right now. Uh, it's not an easy time for people in this planet, I would say. It's, it's not a matter of countries, it's not a matter of rich or poor. This is a very democratic virus, if I can say that. And I don't mean to be funny saying this, but we, it, it leveled everybody to the same line, I would say. So it's a delicate thing. I also thought twice about doing things like this. So I stayed quiet for a little while. And this is a time where we think about a lot, you know. I, I don't know a single human being of my uh, circle of people who are who is not thinking about things deeply you know so it's a privilege to be here long story short i i i think this is a thing that we do from heart we are wholehearted doing this you playing the guitar me building the guitar and uh, this is what keeps us together through difficult times i had the best times doing this i had the worst times doing this but this is what I do for a living, you know. So without being too long, this is just me saying that I'm with you in that regard, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I understand it. And I, I'm pretty sure people who are, who are watching us right now have a very specific need or are going through difficult times as well. So this is something we would like to share, open-hearted. And to, to have you to, to perhaps give you guys a good time, talk about the things we love and so forth. And uh, talking, talking a little bit about my background, I, I started as a guitar player. I used to pl play countless hours, trying to play Steve Ray Vaughan licks, watching the television, eating, and uh, Stratocaster was my first instrument. And I love that thing to death. I mean, that I could not put it away. And uh, that passion led me to improving my guitar. So I took it to guitar makers, repairmen, to change pickups, strings, tuners, to make it better, more playable, better sounding, and so on. And there was an unfortunate time where uh, a, guy, a, a guy who had a shop here in Sao Paulo he did not do a very good job in my guitar. And I was replacing a nut, which is the, the part where it holds the strings after the tuners. And that guy misplaced the nut. He cut it a little bit extra wood and my guitar could not play in tune anymore. It, it turned into a lap steel, you know. Uh, it went fine open tuning and playing slide, but not chords. It could not play in tune ever again. So I went to another guy who had a guitar making school and that was my first time experiencing people making guitars. Yeah. So uh, that was my first time doing that. Can you guys hear me? Are you yes, hearing me? Uh -huh. okay. I can hear and, you okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, I was just blew away. That blew me away completely to, to have the idea that I could make something with my hands and even better, making guitars. That, that was crazy. That was just crazy. And then I studied there. That was the time where I was in college as well. And uh, I quickly decided that college was not for me. I just could not be happy at all at college. There was the drug thing. There was the the whole behavior thing of being too loose, and at least from my perspective. And I, I started researching books and buying everything I could related to guitar making, luthery, and so on. There was the time where I was in the third year of college, and I, I just studied like one hour a week related to business, uh, academic, I, I don't know how to call it in English, but Escola de Faculdade de Economia, Administração, mm -hmm. which is a, business, uh, business administration. Mm -hmm. business. So I was a business administration student. 
And I, I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't like that one bit. As, as, as far as comparing to guitar making, I studied hours, countless hours. I didn't go to sleep. So I, I, I was just devouring books and everything I could find. And my dad, he, I worked with my dad since I was young, and uh, he has a lumber yard company. And uh, he saw that because I was just rubbing shoulders with him every time. So we were really close. And he said, well, you're not fit to do business administration. Just why don't you go chase your dream? You know, I, I can help you with what I can. You know, And he, he, he made all his efforts to to help me out going abroad and studying Lutheran for real, which was my first experience, which was in Michigan, 2008. So that we have, uh, so we have, we do have uh, a lot of people here from the U.S. watching us. So uh, it's really cool that you, you can share with us a little bit uh, your experience here in the United States, uh, especially being the first time, because I remember eight years ago, when I came to the United States for the first time, I thought it was the craziest thing I've ever done. Um, but uh, I mean, it was one of, you know, I'm glad I did. You know, a lot of great things came out of that. Uh, so, and I, and that's, uh, I bet you have a lot of stars. I have a lot of stars. I'm pretty sure you also have a lot of them. So share with us a little bit about your experience here in the United States. I, I loved it. Uh, I mean, everything was different. How people, uh, people's politeness, how uh, Brazilians are used to see Americans as somewhat cold people, you know? And by cold, I, I'm using the ruler of being Latino and hot-blooded and passionate about things as Brazilians usually are. So that was the first difference being in US, you know? People are just more reserved people. They are just, uh, they take time to understand you, at, at least from my perspective. So it was a different culture, different food habits, a different way to see the guitar. And what hooked me up is that everybody likes guitar in America. For real, I mean, from at least from my experience, people always seem to have somewhat some story connected to the guitar somehow, you know. I dated a, a girl who had a Stratocaster in her apartment and she liked Jimi Hendrix and uh, that's very unusual for, for girls in Brazil, at least for, from my time and, and view. And uh, the Americans are very musical, they are very connected to guitar, to the electric guitar mostly. Uh, from what I saw in the acoustic steel string. So that hooked me up. I, I was in love with that. Everywhere I went, and I lived in, in Michigan, so a lot of um, bluegrass music where I was, at least. And I loved that, too. So it was a very in-depth guitar experience, you know. I, I was just in the guitar thing 100% of my time. And I loved that because that's what I wanted in the first place. And uh, I met the most wonderful people at there, you know, my teachers, guys from everywhere in the U.S. and other countries as Korea, Australia, Italy, London. And uh, I mean, I, I met all the, the characters that I saw in the movies in American movies, I saw there, you know, the accents, people from Oklahoma, people from California, people from New York. And then I, that, that uh, mixture of people, 20 guys in a very big shop, guitar noises, machinery running all day long. That was magic. You know, I, that's the only way I can describe it. <laughs> that's great. That's great. That uh, uh, we have a lot of in common there. You know, I uh, when I came to the U.S., I actually came to Missouri in the middle of the Midwest. I was in the middle of the state of Missouri uh, in a city called Columbia. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because yeah. I, I love that place. It was a university town and I, I experienced all those things you're talking about, you know, and the energy, I, the energy. Yeah. And a lot of Americans sometimes they tell me, wow, you were, you know, in a pretty small city, like how I actually loved it. 
and uh, uh, for me especially being new in the us was a perfect place for me to uh learn about the culture develop my english a little more because as you know we can study a lot of english in brazil but uh when you come here and you have to go to the bank answer calls figure out you know uh, uh things in your daily routine that's when you actually learn so uh, yeah so, uh, so it's yeah. it's interesting i think we share a lot in common there um, yeah in the first experience was to order fast food in the airport and i completely uh, no it was a starbucks because i only saw that on tv we didn't have starbucks back there uh -huh. and uh i froze up i could not ask for what kind of milk I wanted. I don't know, I just wanted coffee for Christ's sake. Uh -huh. And uh, I just froze. So it's easy to do on theory, but uh -huh. to speak, to throw yourself to speak a whole other language is a completely different thing. Yes, I had, From I have, I, I have a, an interesting one, like right my first semester here, uh, first few months, I went to a place to get a sandwich and I practiced before I asked her. So I went, you know, I'm going to say this and this. And I said my sentence. And she said something about the money that I didn't understand. But I was like, it's okay. I think this is enough. I, I, it's fine. And then she had, and then after that, she said, uh, for here or to go. And I looked at her and I said, yes. <laughs> and she was like, yes, what? You know, like, uh, it was pretty... You know, yeah. sometimes you think that yes will solve your problem. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't. You it know, not. for the Brazilian friends who are watching here in the US, uh, for here to go, if you want to get your food right away, or if you want your food to go, they did not teach me that in English school in Brazil. So <laughs> I had a pretty good school, but I didn't learn that. So uh, no. among those things, you know, uh, playing gigs in like bars where like, my first jazz gig, every, everything really loud. And the bass player comes to your ear and says something in English in the middle of the, the whole band playing. Like, man, I have no idea what you're saying. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to keep playing here because I don't know. I don't know. Like, I can't, I can't hear you. And even if I could hear you, it's so loud that I, I don't know what you're saying. So yeah. there, there's a lot, there, there, a lot of, of that. Uh, he was probably complimenting you back there. Well, I hope, I hope. <laughs> well, the good thing is if he was saying something bad about me, like I still don't know. So yeah, that's so it's a good deal either way. <laughs> yes, great. Uh, that's that's a great, great talk. Um, uh, uh, João, let's talk a little bit about uh, some different guitars, because a lot of the people who are watching us here, they play different kinds of guitars. Um, and I wanted to, if you could do that in a maybe in a more uh, give us a summary here or uh, the main traits of different guitars. So I have some of my guitars here. Okay. I'll bring them, I'll bring them here. I'll show, I'll show them to everybody. And then you can just talk a little bit, a bit about the properties of the okay. instrument. Uh, what do you, uh, I can see you have a Stratocaster back there. Let's start you... right there. Okay. So let's start, let's start with the uncle Leo, right? Uh, well, this is, for, for me, I'm an arch stop guitar maker, I'm an acoustic guitar maker, and I'm an electric guitar maker. I can talk a little bit more about that later on, but mm -hmm. that guitar you holding, that was my passion at first. I think it's, it, it was invented in the 50s, and it still remains the same. Mm -hmm. So that's, man, that got to tell you something. That must mean something, you know. Mm -hmm. It was designed in early 50s, and uh, it barely hasn't changed at all. Mm -hmm. So this is a solid body guitar, a solid body guitar with a bolt-on neck, which means you can detach the, the body from the neck. See that plate with four screws? That is where you can detach the body and take the neck off the body. And uh, that's a, the whole thing. For, for there's a lot of things about it, but. This is magical because it was thought about replaceability. If 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 would if, 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 if that was damaged somehow, you could just replace it. So it was uh, the the spline, you know, the the it was the the fundamentals behind that idea 
thinking about the radio frequencies back there, the country music. So it's a great project. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the pickups in that guitar, they are a little bit trebly. They are not as full sounding as the humbuckers. This is a single coil pickup, which is just a single uh, uh, pickup with uh, bobbins and a wire around it, while the other instruments has the humbucker, which is dual coil pickup. This guitar has a tremolo, which you can use as a whammy bar, so you can just make effects while doing it. And uh, it has a, a two versions, uh, rosewood board, maple board, and that also brings more versatility to it. So a lot of colors inspired by the automobiles back then in the 50s. So it's a, it's a great project. I love it. And, yeah. uh, I kind of like this guitar, just a cosmetic thing, but uh, this one has the matching uh, the matching headstock. Uh, yes. You know, some uh, uh, a lot of the Fender guitars, they don't. So when I found, I bought this used, and I, I love this guitar. I'm still learning how to play it. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was never really a Strat guy, but I just I, I love it. It's, it's like having a new tool, you know, it's, it's great. A new yeah. toy, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, both, you know, and this was... Uh, immortalized by Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, uh, you know, many other people, but these are the big players who made history using it. And uh, it's just timeless, you know, instruments. They, 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 they have a lot of versatility as far as the pickup configurations. You can change it on the switch, have different tones, like Mark Knopfler did. And I, I think it's a it's a very, it's a trademark to the solid body world, you know? Yes, that's great. I'm going to get ready here just to play some chords, just so everybody okay. can hear. Everybody can hear. I didn't even know. So you have here the neck pickup. So this pickup has five positions, right? So you can have the co different configurations here. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of guitars to get through, so I'm not going to play much, but I just wanted to have this sound in your ear because that's the, the real Strat sound. Okay. So keep that in mind so because we're going to keep moving. Now, uh, João, I do see a very interesting guitar behind you right yeah. there. Uh, it uh, looks like a Les Paul. Yeah, that's that's the Heritage model. Uh -huh. It's my version. It's it, it's my homage to the Holy Grail Les Paul, the 1959 burst. Uh -huh. So I and uh, to talk a little bit about the creations I make, I only make to 15 to 20 instruments a year. So I took that decision while I was starting guitar making. And I never wanted to be a big factory and, and whatnot, because I always focus on the quality. The quality was what drew me into guitar making at first, you know, making things better. And uh, that's my version of a very classic guitar, you know, which is the Gibson Les Paul. And also, but I was also inspired by other brands and other small factories or boutique factories as Collings. I don't know if you know Collings guitars. Mm -hmm. Do you know yes, Collings? Yes. Uh -huh. So yeah. it's uh, I would say Collings is a more refined version of the American classics, and I try to make that my own vision of their work. So I'm very inspired by him. He passed away a, a few years ago, if I'm not wrong. It was a tragic loss to the guitar community, but his work is a legacy to be respected and followed, you know, at least in my opinion. Mm. So do you want me to grab yes, it? Yes, yes, that I was going <laughs> to ask you, because what I'm trying to do here, I'm going to go uh, just talk about the solid body guitars first, and then we can talk about the semi hollow and hollow body. OK, well, uh, this is I don't know if you can see it is just I'm going to just be behind the guitar. It's a single cut guitar. So it's, as you, you said, is a Les Paul inspired instrument. I like to think it's a little bit beyond that to be 
uh, I'm proud of my creations. And uh, it has a flame maple top, special reserved one. So it's a really figured fancy. And it's really about reproducing the magic of the 1950s, you know, the, the really good Les Pauls. Brazilian rosewood, fingerboard, mahogany body. It's, this one is a one-piece mahogany body. Mm-hmm. And has some enhancements to my views. Just the access to the upper register is a little bit better than the Les Paul's sleeker, mm-hmm. faster version of it. It has uh, this one has stainless steel frets, which is something you can customize. But uh, more vintage guys would not approve that, so I'm with that as well. I love vintage. I love stainless steel frets, and it's a really solid, uh, robust version of that so i'm it's a lightweight guitar uh, which is a problem in the realm of solid body instruments they are they tend to be heavy especially the mahogany ones Mm -hmm. and all my guitars are weighted before they become instruments the wood is weighted and you know i take records of everything so it's it's not just putting woods together you know it's not just gluing a piece of wood putting finish on strings and pickups it's a project, really. So this uh, this was my latest creation, and uh, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I can say it. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful, man. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, thanks Thank for you. sharing that. That's, that's an amazing instrument. Um, Thank you. I'm gonna put it back. Yeah. So, guys, what we are doing here? So we are talk about different types of guitars. Uh, we start with the Strat. Uh, now I had the Les Paul that uh, handmade by Casillas, and now I have another one here, Casillas. We are going to a different family of guitars right now. So okay. that's a Gibson ES359. So you guys can probably see it over here. Uh, I love this guitar. Um, it's uh, I got it about three years ago. Um, but I, I mean, I, I, I want more like a technical uh, a point of view here on this guitar. So I'm going to ask Cassius to just tell us a little bit about this kind of construction and how, because later we are going to talk about the arch top, which is different. Okay. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. This is inspired by the 335, which is a Gibson classic. And they are different than the Stratocaster and the Les Paul. They are semi-acoustic guitars, you know, semi-hollow body guitars. They have somewhat, they, they place themselves, I don't want to be too technical here, but they place themselves somewhat in the middle of a true archtop acoustic guitar or an acoustic steel string and in so, a full solid body electric guitar. So you kind of have you have a laminate body construction, which is feedback resistant. So you have that openness, that airy of the notes, but you still have a mostly an electric guitar performance, you know. So I'm, I'm betting you can play on stage without feedback issues. Yeah, so that's a reason why I like this guitar, because it's really versatile. I do use distortion with it. Um, just have how to does it go? Generally goes, goes fine. Never, I rarely have a, a feedback problem. Um, cool. So to play, even to play rock gigs, even I, I use uh, um, the strings I use here are pretty heavy. Uh, they are elevens. Um, so for rock stuff, for two bands, if you're gonna band for two hours, elevens can you know can be a little. You probably want a ten for that. But uh, for my to play fusion stuff, uh, it, it's great. I, I, I love this, this guitar for that uh, because you can really really add distortion. And you can play on large stages and not have a problem with uh, feedback. And those, this one has two humbuckers. Uh, for those who who don't know, uh, Gibson uh, Gibson is based here in, in Tennessee. They have a factory in uh, in Memphis, uh, and I believe they have one here, or they have some kind of uh, um, office here, also in Nashville. Nashville, uh, yeah. And. Um, I didn't get it straight from Gibson though. I just an interesting thing about this guitar when I got it. I got it uh, used, and uh, the guy when, uh, there is a certificate that uh, Gibson issues when they make a guitar. 
and uh, this guy and I was because you know it's an expensive guitar and it's it's a high level instrument I didn't want to I really wanted the certificate you know because you never know uh, if it's like you know a guy like Casillas would probably look in five seconds he can tell uh, but uh, sometimes can be tricky to say to see if the guitar is actually legit or not or if anything was changed so um, it was really great because I mailed Gibson uh, with the serial number they were very helpful and uh, they confirmed that the guitar was made in their factory in 2012 and the guitar sounds great so uh, it's uh, definitely a beautiful instrument. It's cool, and it has humbuckers in it. Yes. So okay. it's a dual coil pickup. It has a fatter, warmer, bigger sounding. Yes. And uh, the. Com Sorry. No, that's right. Comparing to the Stratocaster, at least. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they have very different voices, right? Yes, exactly. And so the Stratocaster was three three pickups. That one, that one, and um, uh, five positions uh, on the here on the the key here uh but uh switch thank you uh here for the for the humbuckers you have a, a three-way switch and uh, you have individual volumes for each pickup individual tone for each pickup exactly the same as the uh, les paul uh, great and it's a, it's a small body semi hollow guitar right paul yes. because exactly you it doesn't feel too big on a waist and to carry around yes. it has a, a big guitar feel but without the compromises right? yes and th that was another reason instead of going to the standard 335 i wanted a guitar that was smaller and that sounds weird for a lot of people because i'm a classical guitarist so i'm used with i used to like playing cl classical guitar but uh um but i just wanted a guitar that was a little smaller um and that's kind of going to relate to our next uh, uh, next guitar here. We're going to talk about sizes and all that. The one that I played before, um, that this beauty right here. So you guys can, oops, you guys can see it right there. Uh, uh, nobody better to talk about this guitar uh, than, than Casillas. So, I mean, there's a whole story here be because uh, we met, we talked... I played a little bit at, at that very room where you are right now and uh, and uh, you know we start to talk about ideas and I try to describe the instrument I wanted and I didn't even know exactly you know what I wanted it took me a while we, you know uh, João um, told me a lot about his instruments gave me details I did a lot of research after I met with him um, but uh, João I'm going to take advantage of you here. You're here. They, I want you to talk about this instrument, not me. Because they hear me okay. talk about this instrument all the time. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, well, this is an archstock guitar. What makes it different compared to the 359 that you showed? Uh, it's a full hollow body guitar. It has no semi-hollow construction, no trestle bracing. It is like a older brother of the violin you know, family. Uh, converted to the guitar world. That was originated in the early 30s by the Gibson as well. And that guitar came when guitars needed to be amplified, to be heard through instrumentos de sopro, como é que se diz? Woodwinds. Uh, wind instruments. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, it needed to be heard in the band, you know, so that's why they invented the pickup. And the first guitars we used electrical pickups were archtop guitars, which they were originally designed to be acoustic instruments, carved top, carved back, but they were electrified. And that's where pretty much all the makers had their inspiration from. Uh, and so uh, the archtop is just a modern, ver that archtop is a Jazz Elite model which is a 16-inch body guitar, and it's a modern version of that, which is a, has a cutaway, and uh, it's it's my vision of the good archstock guitars who are trademarks to the, the jazz musicians and the jazz music itself. So it also was inspired by John D'Angelico, John D'Aquisto, and also to a, 
a great guy who is one of my biggest references, which is Bob Benedetto. I'm pretty sure guys from the art stock world or the acoustic or jazz guitar know Bob Benedetto. And he's the, the modern father of art stock guitars. So, uh, and that's my version of it. It's not a copy, it's not, uh, it's not only a, a slightly different design, but it's a, a, a whole new creation inspired by those guys who made history in the guitar world. It has a whole solid wood construction, so it's spruce, solid spruce, carpet top, maple, European maple back and sides, and uh, the whole neck is North American maple, and all the dark woods are solid ebony from uh, Africa. And this one, talking about the customizations that we fought, we we went after, when Paolo got here, he, well, he he didn't know he wanted a guitar in the first place. What, right after he decided he wanted a guitar, that's the time where the luthier, the guitar maker, has to be, has to have a careful ear to understand the musician's needs. And uh, he's a classical guitar player. That tells a whole lot about what I can do and what I cannot do to make it right. <laughs> classical guitar players are going to receive the arch top differently from electrical guitar players. And uh, that's the whole pavement of the good street we want, or the good path we want to create when doing a custom guitar. Because every people is different. And uh, Paulo has that classical approach, playing with fingernails. Right, Paulo? I mean, yes. you, you, have, you bring the classical guitar approach to the electric arch top guitar world, you know. So you, you don't use a pick that often. Of course you do. You can use yeah, it. Generally, but... generally when I'm playing, if I'm playing a jazz gig, I mean, I, I do, you know, for single line things, I use pick actually quite a lot. But I do, I do spend a lot of time with arrangements, playing solo stuff. So yeah, I, I kind of do both. There's okay. a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So it, it has that versatility of having a good usage of pick and fingernails and fingers, right? Finger style. And, uh, because you also bring that, not only the, the language, the, the, the way of playing classical, but the repertoire, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. some, yeah. some, some things you adapt, some things you bring to the guitar world. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a uh, early 19th century feel, you know, uh, or even older creations, classical guitar realm, and that, that was the, the main factor that led me to making this guitar for you, because uh, that, these are the things people tell without saying anything. Because you, you kind of see the guy who, the way he, he, the guy who holds the guitar tells a lot about the things you need to do or you don't need to do. Because you see how the shoulder behaves and how he twists his body how he's gonna put the guitar neck down. So uh, it's like a body language, it's, it, it is body language. And that for, if you have a careful eye, if you have attention to people, if you are a good listener, it's like a therapy session, you know, is uh, you have to read people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to like music as well, because you, you have somewhat to be connected to the musical world. To, to know what people are playing and what are the references. So, well, long story short, mm -hmm. that I, I would say this is a, a good project, you know, the, the ended up being a good instrument because it brought a smile to your face. I, I, I may, I, I mean, I'm, I hope I'm not saying anything it wrong. Did. But... It did, it did. That's why I show up here every Thursday playing this guitar, you know. I have all, I have all those here, but uh, yeah, when I came back, so I got it was at the end of, beginning of the year, right? Yeah, it was, and... uh, uh, I was seeing the, the Instagram photographs. Uh, we first met at the middle of 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, one year later, that little baby was born. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do, um, it was crazy because I came back here and I, I had all those gigs like ready to go like with Big Band and with my dual partner uh, playing saxophone. 
and it takes a while for you to get used to it you know any instrument it doesn't matter how good it is just different so uh, the gibson was my go-to for all the, those kinds of gigs and then i forced myself at first the first week it took me a second but then it was just like for especially for the things i do with my dual partner which is a more kind of a chamber music kind of setting where i do play a lot of um a lot of uh classical guitar too you know there's no bass player it's just guitar and saxophone so uh this guitar was perfect for it you know uh just be able to play the poly the ability to play polyphonic stuff on this guitar it separates the voices pretty well uh okay. and let me tell you uh to Casillas and everybody else one of the things that i really liked about this guitar is that how balanced the notes are on the high frets here you don't lose here we are through the internet so i don't know how it's getting there for you but here it's just so I'm just playing like without vibrato it's just like a pure kind of drop i could just enjoy just like doing that another thing that uh, I, I started researching a lot of different picks i don't have uh I don't have uh, all the ones that I tried, but I have this pick that I've been using for years and I still use it. Uh, the Jim Dunlop, the stubby one. For you guys. That's classic. That's a classic. Yeah, so I, uh, I always used it, but uh, on this guitar, and that's one of the things that I started realizing at your ch shop. I don't know if you're going to remember this, but I came playing this and it sounds fine. I, 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 tried a lot of different picks and I figured that I don't know if you can hear the difference but here this pick, actually I'm using the dendria oh cool that's a yeah. that's a awesome that's a whole new classic I would say yeah people are going crazy about this new pick yeah I mean it, it makes a huge difference in the sound yes I, I, I just love it and, and what do you think about that pick uh, compared to the stubby one yeah that's the thing like the tone is so much better there is still a learning curve for me because it's thin you know so the stubby i use is 3.0 millimeters and okay. this one is 1. 1.5 so, okay, I'm, so it's tough. I'm 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 getting used to it but it's they're the same size um jonathan kreisberg when he was here uh uh we were talking about picks and stuff he used a pick similar to that but i think he cuts his pick I think he was a bigger one and he cuts it to make it smaller. Um, but it seemed, it seemed to be a, a similar material to this one. Uh, okay. I actually I think that's, that's a softer celluloid material. Uh huh. Okay. So that, I mean, I don't know if people are listening to it and, and per perceiving the, the differences, but compared to the stubby, which is a Jim Dunlop one, mm -hmm. it's a much harder material. So you heard the piercing, articulate, every single thing. Thing. Yeah. It's just every there in your face. Yeah. Uh, which is it's not a bad thing. It's just very Different. percussive, mm -hmm. responsive, in your face kind of yeah. uh, you know, interaction with the Yeah, the for the rock stuff on the strat, I still love the the, the punch that you get. Okay. You know. So because I don't know, I'm gonna play This has more of a whispery quality to it, yeah. right? No. So it's just a softer. Uh, attack. Now, now, now the, the Dunlop. It's a pretty big difference. Yeah. Again. It's more polished. So yeah. it's interesting <laughs> to, to hear that. Um, that's great. That's really great. Uh, let's see if I have questions here. Mark, um, uh, my friend Mark here is asking uh, if this guitar was... Uh, inspired on Sadowski? Uh, it was not. Uh, I, I love Roger Sadowski work, I, but as Roger has mostly laminated construction body design and they are made in Japan. They are factory made in Japan. And uh, I think they are designed to be more of an electrical guitar than an acoustic guitar. And uh, he's a good reference as far as guitar technician. He's a big name to the guitar world. 
but that guitar is more inspired was more inspired in the acoustic guitar arch tops carved by solid woods which brings a whole another uh, experience to the player i would not i won't say good or bad because that's not up to me as saying jazz or rock which one is bad that's there is no such thing but i would say it it's like enhancing a plate of food you know uh, uh, like you can cook steak but you can cook to many different levels of complexity and i see guitar making somewhat as cooking as well you can take wood which is a simple and natural element and bring it to more complex responsivity and useness you know so that's that's why it's not based on a Sadowski. It's more based on a G the Angelico and Benedetto guitar. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for the answer. Um, guys, I want you guys to, uh, if you have questions, please feel free to start typing them here. Um, and uh, we'll be happy to answer if you have questions. Uh, João, uh, let's spend just uh, like a quick minute here uh, because uh, you I, you just showed your beautiful guitar right there maybe we can just go through here a couple pictures of just uh, some instruments that you have I, I, you know it's it's just beautiful to look at you know i i, I love it so lead the way <laughs> so maybe uh let's try this let's see if i can uh, do this uh, robbie chan just asked something we can go back later on that if you want to yes let's let's uh yeah we go back to that in a Let's just uh, talk about here your instruments. So I'm just gonna go through here some of the, the guitars. The first one here, uh, the Jazz Elite 16, with the burgundy burst. Is that guitar similar? Is that guitar similar to mine, or uh, yes, uh, somewhat similar. Yes, uh, your guitar is a violin burst, which is uh, a different paint technique applied to the guitar. And uh, this one is, uh, your guitar has yellow, light, uh, tobacco, brown, and red to the color. And this one, the burgundy burst, has only red, but applied in different ways that you go through shading and different uh, shadowing, only using a spray gun and a lot of technique. I have a guy here in my shop, which is Baudir. He's a painting expert for more than 20 years, and he does all the finishing. Our, in, in our instruments and also to talk a little bit about my crew here this uh, is not a one-man shop anymore just to be quick this me Valdir Giovanni so I have an assistant I have a, also two of the most wonderful people who work here incredibly talented guys different ages and also have Renata which he she takes care of all the uh, customer relationships she makes sure everything has, everyone has their own nuts and bearings on, you know, so we don't get crazy with the, all the payments and the buying stuff and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So talking about that guitar, that's a very similar guitar of you, considering the difference of body carving and which way I would go as far as more acoustic or electric, because it depends on the player or the collector. <laughs> And that guitar went to a guy who is from Rio de Janeiro. And uh, he also wanted a guitar that has that performance of a jazz elite, of the archtop guitar, a true archtop acoustic, but mostly oriented to the electric sound. So it has a very well balanced as far as the electric performance and the acoustic performance. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Let's get to Robbie's question here. Um, nope. I'm going to let you answer. João, uh, can you speak about fret height size uh, in regard to tone and sound? Does fret size affect the sound of the guitar? Yes, it does. Simple as that. Bigger frets are going to sound more metalish. They are going to be trebly. The, uh, uh, that also cannot cannot be said as a quality or a defect but is a characteristic you know it's just a feature and i i prefer to use smaller frets because i want a woodier sound 
And all my guitars, they have different fret sizes. The Archtop uses a very thin, a very small and narrow fret size because you, the guitar is more in tune because you, has, you have a, a little sharp, uh, the intonation points are more precise, especially if you did a good job installing frets and leveling and recrowning. And uh, I have bigger fret sizes for my electric guitars, but always trying to choose the smallest in the realm of bigger fret sizes. So uh, I, I, I think it's a very big factor in tone. And I, if I can give you some uh, tips, I would say to always go for smaller frets if you want a more natural acoustic woody sound. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, and last, I just want to really quick uh, uh, just tell you guys here um, on the last part here of the the live today, Casillas will be giving us a tip about guitar maintenance, and he's gonna also talk a little uh, ways where we can enhance our, our instruments to just to be able to get a better result uh, so that's gonna be like our last tip and we're gonna save that for the end uh, you guys feel free to send more questions and I have another guitar here um, let me grab back here talk a little bit about this guitar too since we're going through so many different instruments uh, so uh, Cassius is uh, he, he 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 makes uh, electric guitars and also acoustic steel string guitars. Um, this is not necessarily the type of guitar that he makes, but I'm pretty sure he knows a lot about it too. Uh, so this is a classical guitar made by a friend and an excellent guitar maker from Brazil uh, called uh, Joacir Carvalho. Um, I actually own two of his guitars. One of them lives in Brazil. Uh, it's Br it's Brazilian rosewood. And this one is Indian rosewood on the back. So here you can see Indian. When I say uh, Indian rosewood guitar, I'm referring to sides and back because uh, the top here is spruce, at least on the guitars that I use. Very often, the m two more popular kinds of woods that you're going to use on a classical guitar are going to be either spruce on top or cedar. Those are the main ones. Uh, and uh, this guitar here uh, he made for me in 2015 and uh, I, I, I was living in Colorado at the time and uh, with very very low uh, humidity and uh, uh, winters there were very very cold um, at the time I had the other guitar the one with Brazilian rosewood but uh, the guitar couldn't really handle the lack of humidity so I, I got two huge cracks on the back uh, and it was not uh, it was not a construction problem. It was just Brazilian rosewood. The wood grew grew up in Brazil, you know, it used to like the tropical climate, and uh, obviously bringing it to Colorado, uh, it didn't really work. Obviously, there are some Brazilian rosewood that are older and they're more resistant, uh, but was not the case for that one. So now that I, I, I took the guitar back to Brazil, he fixed it for me and it's beautiful, but uh, I just leave it there now. Um, so I, I play that when I when I go to Brazil. Um, can you sh share with us a little bit about the differences, uh, Cassias, between a classical nylon string guitar like that and a steel string guitar like the ones you make? Uh, yes, uh, I can go a little bit at the ballpark of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, despite the difference that one has steel string guitar and the other has nylon string guitar uh, strings, uh, it, they are designed to do different things. The steel string guitar, the traditional American classic from Martin and Gibson, they have the, the, the challenge for the maker is to bring bass response or bass response that will bring balance to the guitar because it has trebles all over the place. It's not difficult to make a very good steel string with good trebles, but it's very difficult to, to make a good balanced bass, middle response and the, the whole spectrum. And the nylon strings on the other hand, 
it has a lot of base response. It gives for free, you know, it's just there. And the whole challenge for the maker is to bring good trebles, powerful, piercing, projecting trebles to the nylon string guitar. This, yeah, exactly. That, 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 no, that's all right. That, that pretty much uh, puts a picture to what I'm saying. Because you got to have those melodic, rich, uh, powerful treble notes, especially on the high register. And if you don't have that, it's just going to be boomy, bassy, and not interesting. Right? I mean, you, I, I'm pretty sure you played a lot of classical guitars, being a classical guitar player in your background. And you just said, well, the bass is there, but there's something missing. Or maybe a lot of things missing, but why would you agree? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, and I spent a fair amount of time trying different guitars. And I've, I've, there are guitars that are pretty loud, but when you go to the trebles, you don't get that response. Um, and there is definitely different kinds of constructions too, different kinds of yeah. bracing. Uh, the internal construction of the guitar yeah. changes to get yeah. different uh, kinds of results. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, we could go I, on for, for a while, talk yeah. about you know, I mean, the construction. Talking about the main differences. I'm sorry to interrupt you, man. I just uh, uh, it's just oh, talking it's about. It's okay, the, man. I'm <laughs> I'm upset now. <laughs> I just get crazy. I have to talk about. It. But uh, the construction difference primarily is just the steel strings and X brace guitar. The, the internal structure is an X, so it has a whole other functioning uh, criteria and, and whatnot. And the Spanish classic guitar is a fan-braced guitar, which is like a fan. It has, you know, this kind of design. It's not a cross bar. And pretty much all the, the school of thought around it the classical ones and the, the classical nylon string guitar and the classical Martin string guitar, the steel strings, they are very respectful to that uh, history, that legacy around the, the, the difference, the main differences. And that is the main reason that takes those instruments apart from each other. So that's what I wanted to say to take advantage of what you said. Yeah, no, that was a great answer. And I would uh, just to add to that uh, on the classical guitar, and I don't know as much about the steel string, but on the classical guitar, also uh, uh, guitar makers are always experimenting with the bracing here. Uh, I, I hear that from talking to different uh, guitar makers, uh, different ways of ma to make those, those uh, bracing, this bra bracing inside the instrument. Uh, to achieve different results. And there is a whole legacy history behind that uh, in the 20th century uh, with guitars, uh, guitars like that. So, yeah. And I mean, and besides that, just the obvious difference here, the neck tends to be a little wider uh, yeah. for the classical. The uh, acoustic steel string tends to be a little, a little uh, shorter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I mean, I always, I always like to think that in some ways, from the from the player point of view and the tocability, uh, steel string guitar is closer to an arch top than to a classical guitar. Uh, the way it feels when you play, uh, the frets and all that. Um, I think that's an interesting uh, and a valid way to compare those two things. So it, it brings you familiar feelings or something yes. like yes exactly. more than the other more than yeah i feel like going going through like playing the classical and going to a steel string it's harder than going from the arch top to a steel string oh cool because that it shouldn't be i mean mm -hmm. for a logical from a logical perspective right uh -huh. because you are changing from steel string to steel string they should be they, they would have to be somewhat of familiarity between yes, them. Uh -huh. And obviously but, the way it feels, I mean, a huge thing if you're playing with your nails, the way it feels when you pluck, that's definitely huge. And uh, I mean, just the polyphonic control, there are certain things that the classical guitar is a little more suited. Uh, although there are great instruments like, like yours and a lot, a lot of other great uh, electric guitars, but in the essence of the instrument, the classical guitar for polyphonic control 
it tends to be a little more suitable. Um, sorry. What do you want? Uh, can you can you just give a, few, a quick example of the polyphonic control that you mentioned? My guitar is out of tune, but I, so when you have like uh, have this note here going on. I have this pedal note going on and then at the same time I have this other voice you have two two layers okay and uh, obviously electric guitars you can do that too but uh, especially when you're playing um, I should have tuned that guitar <coughs> beforehand because I haven't played this guitar in a while so I could uh, actually play something but uh, um, uh, it's just uh, it's just the essence of the instrument. Like we play a lot of ren music from the Renaissance, music from the Baroque era, on the on the classical guitar, and uh, it's it's a perfect instrument for that because it allows you that control and that uh, and that uh, representation of layers and that idea oh. of you know one voice being the front, other voice being more on the back. And that's a good thing about the arch top too, because their top brings a little bit of that kind of feel, which uh, certain guitars like a Strat, it's gonna be a little harder to to get that kind of control. That's what I. I that's great, man. I, and uh, I, I would like to pull that subject a little bit more to us, because you are saying that the feel, what you play, the the repertoire, brings more. Uh, playing more familiar feel than the technical and the mechanical differences between them, you know? What you will play is more of a resemblance between archtop and nylon string tar than the archtop and the steel string. Despite the fact that mechanically the specs, the measurements are very similar to the archtop and the steel string guitar, the steel string acoustic. So, but because the what you play, the way you play, and what you are looking for when playing is so particular in your case that you find more similarity even in different things mechanically. That's yeah. that's awesome because it defies the the laws of measurements, engineering, acoustic engineering, and so on and so on. It's a, it's like comparing, you know, ap it's not apples to oranges, but apples to rockets. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just, yeah. but, That's but it can be, it can be, we can bring this to a context where is the mu musicians, musician who dictates what is familiar and what is uh, closer to what he needs, you know. So this is great. This is a great, uh, great uh, input yeah that's definitely a learning curve uh i mean as far as especially when you're a classical guitar player you're trained to get a lot of sound of your instrument you, you learn how to push the string against the guitar and uh actually i'm gonna share that with you guys here because this is a very important for classical guitar technique and uh, has everything to do to what uh, cassie is talking about here we have some classical players some jazz guitar players so i think this can benefit uh, everybody a little bit so when you play a classical guitar it's an acoustic instrument and uh, uh, here you want to make sure that you can get as much sound as you can and uh, the mechanics of, of our plucking the guitar uh, can be very complex and you need a lot of training but uh, just to summarize here uh, you wanna you wanna pluck the string in a way that the string doesn't o doesn't only vibrate this way, right? So if I pluck it like this, the string is gonna tend to vibrate this way, sideways, right? Yeah, sideways. Yes. Uh huh. And then if you if you press, see this kind of motion here, when you pluck it, when you go this way, the string is now vibrating this way which is the same way that the top is going to vibrate. Okay. Does that make sense? So when you have, if you guys have questions, please uh, go ahead and write in the chat. But uh, the string is going to vibrate this way. 
and the top also is going to vibrate this way. So uh, this mechanic, it's really important to get this big sound without, you know, uh, obviously without buzzing. But and a lot of people think that you have to put to play hard, but it's all about technique and you use the whole finger. There are a lot of other things. So I spent years working on that and play it's because I play for with this guitar in halls, like with, you know, over a hundred people. I've played in pretty big halls only with this guitar with no amplification. Um, so you worry about all these mechanics and how to balance all the fingers. And when you go to an electric guitar, this all changes. You don't need to, to you don't even want to, to play that way. Also, the proportion of uh, nail, if you look at, uh, it's hard to see my nail, I have long nails. Uh, the proportion of nail and flash, it's crucial here. On classical guitar, uh, on electric guitar, it's also going to be important. But the way that you're going to operate with that is going to, is also uh, going to be a little bit uh, different. So when you, no. you, when you go to the electric guitar, you don't want to like use this super hard, heavy pressing the string against the guitar because you don't need it. You have a pickup, you have, it's a steel string. It's, uh, uh, the mechanics here of sound production will be, uh, different. Yeah. I mean, that also speaks to the direction of understanding your musical need both ways. I mean, you as the musician for yourself and the maker for as far as understanding the peop the player's needs mm -hmm. and that that if if you don't know how the me the little mechanics as you were explained the, how they work how could you possibly design sound exactly how could you possibly uh put something to work with the motion of the top as you said mm -hmm. because it has to do that. It has to be in synergy with it. Otherwise, it's just going to be, you know, offset and it, wouldn't, it will not sound good. Mm -hmm. And the difference between a great guitar that you can't put away and a mm, good guitar is huge. Not for the listener, perhaps, but for the player. And you, you know, Paulo, I, I'm pretty sure you have experience you have experienced this in the past or in the present and uh to have some instruments that you just can't put it down they inspire you because they respond to you as far as creative tool as far as um, uh, making your horizon broader and broader as you play it mm -hmm. uh, i'm not being too philosophical about it but i'm just i'm pretty sure Every guitar player who's listening to us or just staying here with us, they have played somewhat of magical guitars or they have a magical guitar that they are just getting tired from work. They come home and they just want, they, oh man, I have to play it because I feel home with it. I just, everything I try to do, it responds, right? I mean, yes, yes, I, I, I really agree. But I also, I want to go to the other side of the spectrum now because you're talking about something really cool. That's how, like, this relationship of how the instrument, this relationship, this relationship between the instrument and the musician, right? Uh, yeah. And I think this is beautiful. Like, uh, when I, I, I got like your guitar or my new classical guitar, I just learned so much about my playing, and I saw, I realized that there were a lot of adjustments that I needed to do in order to get even more out of those instruments. But now going to the other side of the spectrum for, um, uh, not, you know, not uh, when I started, I didn't have access to like really great instruments. In yeah. fact, my instruments, my first guitar had a hole. It was an acoustic, uh, classical guitar. It had a hole. I could put my hand inside the guitar. It was just crazy. Uh, and my it was a defect. It was not a feature. <laughs> no, it was not. It was not like okay. I could. I it was. I could see like my f looking through the sound hole. I could see my feet. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad, and, That's not a good detail. That's and, not a good. Uh, sound. And that uh, was like the the neck and the the strings. They were like it was bold, so it was really hard to play a bar chord. So I learned how to play bar chords on that guitar, and now I look back, and again that had. Ha 
it's it kind of relates to what you're talking about right how the, in, the the relationship between the instrument and the musician um yeah and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm and sorry. That, so no, that's okay. And uh, so I, I take myself as an example, but a lot of us, when we start, we don't have very good instruments. And yeah, I'm grateful. I most of us don't, right? Yeah. And, and I'm actually grateful because that's how you develop your ear uh, uh, and uh, start to understand your needs. You know, if you have already like a really great guitar, you never un really understood what what means to have a guitar that is not really easy to play or a guitar that sounds bad so as you develop as a musician uh you should be developing your instrument i don't think it's necessarily a must to have the best instrument on day one uh if you can have one great but uh i do think that uh, uh it's important for you to develop your ear as you develop as a musician you can you can you know have access to a better instrument then um with me i had my first electric guitar uh cassius was a strat um that uh, my aunt had and she gave it to me uh, <clears throat> it was a magnus have you heard of this guitar no thank god i have very few people have heard and i only <laughs> saw one of those uh and i'm grateful because i learned you know my first licks on that guitar and uh and it's great. I don't know if it still exists, but uh, um, uh, it did. You know, it, it served me okay on my on the very beginning. So, um, if you guys, uh, whoever is watching there, I have a few guitars. Let us know on the comment section what was your first guitar. I'll be yep. curious to see to see uh, what uh, what people are, will be typing. Let's there. Dig, dig in the treasures. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I agree, agree with you, man, because uh, of course you can start with a great guitar, but you, uh, you, if you start with a bad instrument, that's not bad enough to make you run away from guitar playing, because that's another important detail. If it's just too bad, you won't have, you won't, uh, you won't like to play it anymore. So it's, that's way worse. It the, can't be a about. cause of frustration for, yeah, for somebody. Yeah, or, or even physical pain. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's a uh, survivable experience, if you can survive that experience of a bad guitar, you, and that fast-forwarding, then uh, I cannot offer to a single human being on the planet the best guitar if he doesn't want that, or even he doesn't need that. He doesn't find the need to have it. Because that is a two-way deal. That is a two-way purpose. The, the whole sense of purpose relies on the guy who's going to play it and the other guy who's going to make it, you know. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, who's to say the guitar is better? The guy who's going to use it. Mm -hmm. And the guy who's going to try to expand its musical abilities or formats or creations and so on. <clears throat> I don't know if you agree with that, but... Uh, uh, what do you say? No, I, mean, I do, I do. No, I do. I agree completely. I agree. It's like giving a crappy car to a, a racer. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be able to perform or to give what he can give. Uh -huh. exactly. Or just giving a jet pilot a, you know, old timey 1940s airplane. Not, not bad. Nothing bad about that for, for you know, historical purposes. Mm -hmm. But technology and enhancements and self uh, enhancement as makers of things we're talking about guitars but uh, it, it brings that that uh, awareness of tool awareness of musical possibilities we can give mm -hmm. you know and everything was already created in the past take classical music beethoven uh, mozart Everything was already made, I mean, in that point of view. And you have to make your own version, your own special sauce out of it, you know? And why not walking side by side with creativity, collaboration, and making something better? So, well, that's, that's just me saying. I get excited when talking about it. But uh, it makes perfect sense to try to enhance as tools, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you know that's great uh we do have some people here so let's say uh let's see here uh robbie robbie chen is in singapore um he doesn't remember the brand but it was some chinese guitar that he bought in a store in singapore so you can imagine there's a stratocaster copy see <laughs> i'm sorry it's a, it was a stratocaster style. ah yeah that's right i saw it there Stra uh, chinese stratocaster that's great marcelo uh how are you marcelo uh he's a drummer oh the, the name of his drums is emerson so have you ever heard of emerson drums have you heard of emerson no, drums I haven't, I haven't. me neither but it's not my thing you know i, I i'm not a I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah i but yeah I, got, I don't know he he had well fernando he had an active phone less ball special he's better than the average he, oh yeah Tá melhor que a maioria, Fernando. <laughs> e aqui, Jennifer do Cleverson. Uh, Cleverson has a Jennifer guitar. For those guys who don't know what Jennifer means, it's not the good actresses, the beautiful actresses. It's just a crappy, 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 poopy Brazilian factory guitar. It's just way low. If you survive that, Cleverson, you are just fine, man. Just That is a real uh, proof to yourself. And uh, Ismael Nascimento had a Pacific Yamaha. Uh, Better. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So let's see here. José Ricardo, uh, my first acoustic guitar was a Tonante, o rei dos violões. Okay, so that that's a classic. That's I a classic. never had a Tonante, and I, I had the one I had, I don't even remember the brand, uh, but it was like kind of like... Uh, uh, the same kind of level of uh, Tonante. Uh, yeah. So my first guitar was a Tonante as well. Hey, those violins. Hey, those violins. The it, king it of the play. guitars. <laughs> it, it could not play in tune. It was harder than pushing a truck uphill. It's just it makes you a real man. You know, it just makes you. If if you can survive that, you, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you guys want to keep typing names of guitars, we are curious to know uh what you guys uh played um so uh there is a question here if you wanna uh i uh this is more like about classical guitar but if you can talk a little bit about this could you say a little about how the sound is affected by the parallel versus uh parallel and x bracing do you know much about that well this is a very arch toppy question i would say uh, uh, Oh, yeah, because, because the arch top is X bracing, right? That, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. most of the arch tops are X braced, and some arch tops, lay, uh, the, the, the older ones were parallel braced. But to 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 be not to be too long about this, a parallel brace gives that projection, piercing, uh, powerful, not that much of a bass balance response, but is a powerful guitar. If you want string separation, note separation, if you want everybody to hear those notes, parallel bracing is the way to go. If you want a more balanced guitar, you can go for the X-braced one. You have all sorts of variations of thickness, materials, sizes, dimensions, whatnot, but the X-brace delivers a more of an acoustic steel string kind of feel, you know, more bass balance, uh, uh, not as loud as the parallel bracing, mm -hmm. but is a uh, is not a good and bad. I mean, it's just for personal preference only. Mm -hmm. Great. And that question, Kleber asked that question. Thank you, Kleber. That was a great question. And his first guitar was an Ego stra Strat, Ego Strat, <laughs> as we say in Brazil. Another another Strat copy. Yeah, another friend here, uh, Fabricio Amorim. Uh, his first guitar was a laser, L A Z E R. I actually played that guitar myself because we went to high school together. <laughs> and uh, good to see you, Fabricio. Uh, well, I don't see you, but I'm glad you're here. Um, so yeah, he had uh, this laser guitar, laser made in China. <laughs> uh made in china that's great i played a lot on that guitar actually played a lot of legion urbana and uh other popular songs from from brazil 
Uh, another question here. Uh, na opinião de vocês, ok. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it in Portuguese because we have some people also uh, uh, watching from Brazil. We're gonna do a quick switch here of language. Uh, na opinião de vocês, qual o tipo de corda uh, explora melhor as características da art top guitar? Flat wounds or round wounds? Guys, uh, he's gonna answer that for us in Portuguese and then we will uh, translate in English. Uh, can you answer that uh, for us, Cassius, first? And then I can give my, my opinion. Ok, great. Uh, uh, eu acho que cordas, elas são bem diferentes. É, a corda lisa, ela é a assinatura do jazz, vamos dizer assim. Ela, ela, é o que, ela tem aquele som redondo, doce, delicado, que também perde o brilho logo de cara e perde principalmente em poucas semanas, né? E, e ela dá aquela sensação lisa, sem ruído, e, e aquele registro de, da nota com agudo na medida certa, redondinho e tudo mais. Só que ela não vai ter tanto volume, ela não vai ter tanta separação de notas, ela vai perder o brilho muito rápido, pelo menos é o que eu vejo nos instrumentos. E eletrificada, quando você toca plugado, ela pode ficar é, meio pó, 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 sabe aquele som meio abafadinho, percussivo, mas meio abafadinho, né? Uhum. E pode ser uma qualidade isso, mas eu a, eu vejo as guitarras como ferramenta de expressão musical. Uhum. E quando você... Desculpa, não, pode, é, pode é, terminar. Pode e, terminar. Só para falar assim, para arredondar, eu, eu acho que cada um tem que, ser, tem que ter o seu uso, né? Eu vejo excelentes músicos com cordas lisas e excelentes músicos com cordas redondas, né? normais, crespas. E eu, mas eu acho que a corda crespa, apesar do do porém de não ser lisinha e ter um pouco mais de ruído, elas dão um pouquinho mais de expressão para músicos no estilo seu, Paulo, que, que tocam mais orquestralmente, que querem tirar essas nuances com palhetada forte, ou tocar forte ou fraco, e tirar esses elementos a mais do som. Mas, cara, as duas são ótimas. Uhum. Não, eu não sei dizer o que é bom ou ruim, sabe? Uhum. Eu tenho essa, o que eu sei com certeza é que quando um art top nasce aqui na oficina, as com cordas lisas, elas já nascem meio calminhas. Tudo no lugar, comportadinhas. E as com cordas crespas, elas são o bicho, assim. Elas querem sair detonando no mundo. Isso é um, pode ser um sinal. Se você gosta disso, bacana. That's great, that's great. Um, we're switching back here to English again. Uh, uh, but that was a great answer. Um, Uh, and I agree with you a lot on that one. Uh, I, I'm still searching. I change it all the time. Right now I have uh, flat wounds on my arch top, but I've been wanting to explore the um, uh, round wounds too. So yeah, I think it depends. And also if you're more like a jazz straight ahead guy, I think that would be suitable. But if you do more than uh, like different styles, especially on a semi hollow body, like I think uh, round wounds would be the way to go. Uh, <clears throat> all right. I agree with you. Um, okay. Uh, another uh, another one in Portuguese here. Maybe we can try to give like shorter answers in both languages. Okay. Does that, does okay. that work? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, existe algum pedido de instrumento inusitado que fugisse totalmente dos padrões conhecidos que tenha te desafiado? That's a good question. I'm gonna translate that. So, uh, Cleverson is asking if uh, uh, everyone ever ha asked Cassius about like uh, asked him to make a guitar that was totally uh, like unusual and something that totally unexpected. So can you uh, let us know? It can start in English first. I had, and uh, that's been what I call the one-of-a-kind guitars. They are collectible museum-grade instruments, and they are detached from what I do regularly. They are custom, one-of-a-kind. They have a certificate of exclusive uh, authenticity and uh, uniqueness to it. And they sometimes have no starting point whatsoever other than the customer saying, well, surprise me. But I say, what, what do you want to do with the guitar? What woods do you want to choose? And the people usually just say, well, João, it's yours. Take it where you want to go. And these are different guitars. They can be very exotic and uh, 
collectible, and they also can be something that will bring uh, a message to the family. Or so it's it happened before. Então, respondendo, quer que eu, não sei se quer que eu responda. Então, teve, eu tive pedidos bem inusitados, que é o que eu chamo de guitarras one of a kind, que são traduzindo para português rapidamente, é guitarras exclusivas, de uma linha só, de um tipo, de, de uma feitura só. Então, são guitarras mais orientadas para colecionadores e é, são começam das mais variadas formas. Eu já fiz algumas. E, a, e teve um pedido muito incomum que, que, que me marcou, que foi onde a pessoa falou, João, eu falei, o que, que você quer desse instrumento? E a pessoa me respondeu com o seguinte, me surpreenda. E isso tem se tornado uma assina, um, um, uma repetição, uma repetição boa que desafia completamente, porque liberdade total é tão desafiador quanto controle total. Você já deve ter experienciado, você como músico, Paulo, quando o cara fala assim, faz o que você quiser, é muito desafiador. Porque você pode fazer tudo o que você quiser. Uhum. E olha a responsabilidade de colocar isso no mundo, né? Claro. Uhum. Então, é, assim... é, 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 é incrível, uh, it's crazy how, how this translates, uh, that we're talking about just now, how it translates in music and, uh, and uh, guitar making, right? Because at the end of the day, it's all like you're making something new, so how like you know when you have a gig for uh just translate in english here a little bit uh when you have a gig and uh you know you have to record something and the producer says you can do whatever you want you know i don't have any guidelines for you it's a lot of responsibility the same as a guitar maker you know someone gets to casillas and says hey i want a guitar but i don't have any guidelines for you just surprise me you can do you know uh, and i'm i trust you So it's interesting uh, to see this relationship, and it's it's at the end of the day, it's art, you know, uh, and, yeah. and both on both examples. So I think it's a very interesting way to look at it. Uh, we are uh, probably uh, really close to the end here. I uh, I really appreciate like everybody like being with us until so late. Uh, I'm gonna ask you guys. There is a button there that uh, looks like this. If you wanna press that like button over there. I would appreciate that will help more people to to have um, uh, access to our content here, helps the channel. So if you enjoyed our talk and if you learned anything from that, please uh, make sure to smash the like button. Also feel free to subscribe. Uh, it, uh, I post videos at least once a week, uh, teaching videos, some performances. I might cut some parts of this video here with Cassius if he allows me. Uh, because there was some uh, good information and I might uh, put that in the channel so it's a little easier to access uh, the video. Uh, uh, we have time for final questions. If you have your questions, you might want to type them now because now it's the time for that final tip that uh, Cassius was going to give. A general <laughs> tip here for... Uh, just a general tip for guitarists uh, and I'm just going to let you take it away. Okay, man, I have so many tips to share, but every I, I, I'm guessing that everybody has a mechanical pencil. Is that right? Lapisera? Mechanical pencil? So it's a very sharp and fine point. It's 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.5, I'm sorry. And that can be a lifesaver in the tricky tuning situation. Uh, because Everybody had some time where the guitar couldn't play in tune or just kinked when you were tuning. It was just way up or way down. It could not play in tune at all. If you just take the string off the slot, I'm going to take the guitar to show you guys. We are going to learn something new. Actually, he taught me that when I was back in Brazil. Uh, and I really appreciate that tip, but I'm not going to spoil. I'm going to let him finish. <laughs> it's, it's simple, I promise. It's not going to be rocket science show here. Well, this is a mechanical pencil. Everybody has seen one, I presume. And this is the nut where the strings rest in direction to the tuners and the headstock. If you take, I'm going to, it's going to be difficult to show and tell and do here, but you take the string off the slot just remove it or just you don't have to uh, 
tune off your guitars just slightly off just to make it more bendy you know take off the slot and trace inside here until it's all graphite color you know it's just uh, scribe it there Di what what this is gonna do is it's gonna lubricate the slot and it's gonna allow the string to move up and down the neck and man this saves lives you know just uh, I'm, I'm really telling you guys it, that makes a huge difference because it's just uh, 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 lubrication is and uh, this makes crappy guitars poorly made ones playing a lot more in tune than others and you can do that in the bridge where the strings rest here, if it's a wooden bridge especially, and you can do that on the nut where I showed you guys. And you can do that on all six strings. Just make sure to not tune out your guitars too much because when you scribe it with a mechanical pencil, it's gonna take all the graphite off. So just cut a, bit, a little bit of the slack, do that, repeat it, it's gonna be happy, so your guitar playing is going to be a lot more happy. That's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> and let me just tell you, tell you guys, it's on this very guitar here. Uh, uh, when, I, when I got it, we had 12s, uh, flat wounds. And uh, out of curiosity, I wanted to try uh, 13s. Is that right? I think that was 13, right? Yeah, he's a... He's a uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's yeah, a body. I was like, so. you know, I can do this. I want to see how this guitar is going. 13 is a really, really heavy uh, gauge of strings. Um, and because the string is a little thicker, um, uh, the slot, we, it, our goal, we, we try to do that without uh, changing the slot. Uh, because uh, sometimes the string is too thick, you have to open the slot a little bit. And when we did that, uh, it was fine, everything was fine, but when I was tuning, there was just a little squeak. And then uh, Casillas was like, oh, give me one second. He got his mechanical pencil, his lapiseira in Portuguese. And he did this, worked like magic, like I saw it in front of me. And it's still today, like, you know, it's fine. I mean, I changed strings, I actually did that myself too, and uh, it's great. So I saw that, I saw that being done, so it definitely works. Um, well, uh, let's uh, uh, take a final question and then uh, uh, be ready for our final remarks. Um, Marcelo is asking if it can be used on acoustic. It can be used on any steel string, any stringed instrument, nylon strings, um, steel string acoustics, electric guitars. You can use that on bass guitar also. Mm -hmm. every, every of those instruments, they need lubrication. So go ahead. Great, great. Well, thank you everybody for, for uh, watching and sticking around here. We have 17 people still here with us after, you know, almost, uh, I want to say, one hour and 47 minutes. So it uh, was, was, wow. lo was longer. Uh, we could do this all day because <laughs> it's, uh, it's fun. Uh, we appreciate, you know, we, we do that uh, because of you guys, you know, you guys coming and hanging out with us. That's the whole point. Um, I, it's great to see new people in the channel, like watching us. Also some old friends. I really appreciate you guys uh, supporting the channel. If you haven't uh, uh, liked the, the video, please, uh, if you feel inclined, uh, do that for us. And uh, I want to thank uh, João Casillas, my friend here. Great professional, great guitar maker. Uh, thank you for your time and thanks for a great talk. Man, my pleasure. We could do this anytime. I'm really happy to, to be here with you. We are just so far away. We are in the United States, I'm in Brazil, but we, I feel connected this way, you know, especially during difficult times. So it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, guys, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Time, 10 horas, horário de Brasília. Uh, we're going to be here uh, next week. We have a very special, very special uh, event because I'm going to have not one, not two, not three, but actually going to have four guests with me. Uh, and they're all Bel uh, faculty at Belmont University. And uh, for uh, we're going to have the drum professor, uh, Todd London. We are going to have uh, bass professor, Roy Vogt. 
piano professor Anthony Belfilio and voice professor Jamie Wigton. Uh, you guys don't want to miss this. It's going to be a great conversation about career, about uh, uh, studying music in college and about gigs. We are also going to talk a little bit about the current situation here in the United States, in Nashville. So uh, for those who play those uh, instruments, uh, you probably want to join. Actually, it's going to be a great talk for any instrument. So you don't want to miss that. Those guys are amazing musicians. We all are part of the faculty jazz group. It's a jazz group that we play together uh, constantly. And I invited them. They were really happy and they're excited to, to join us here. So thanks again. Thank you, João. Uh, and My pleasure. You're welcome. And I'll see everybody next week at the same time, same channel. I'll see you guys. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.